Congressman Soleimani. Joining us now from Capitol Hill, Democratic Congressman Ted Liu, a member of the House Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman, why was this vote, why was this debate so important today? And was it changed? Was it aided by support from two Republican senators who were irate after that briefing with Trump's national security team yesterday? Uh, thank you, Nicole, for your question. I previously served on active duty, and if we're going to put our troops in harm's way, we better have a strategy. Unfortunately, we don't have a strategy from the Trump administration. We just have impulsive and reckless decision-making by the president, and Republicans are seeing that, too. It's not just Senators Rand Paul and Mike Lee. It's also Republicans in the House of Representatives. This is going to be a bipartisan vote in the House. Are, I hadn't heard that. Who, who, are you ready to name names? What Republicans are going to vote with Democrats to limit the president's war powers? Uh, it is my expectation that Matt Gates and uh, Representative Massey will vote for this resolution as well. And what, I mean, that would be a big deal. And for someone like Matt Gates, a presidential uh, bosom buddy, to basically co-sign um, this reassertion of congressional authority over acts of war feels like a significant moment in the Trump presidency. Am I reading too much into that? I believe it would be. Let's see uh, when the vote happens and make sure he delivers. But you have a number of Republicans who believe in the principle that it is Congress that has the power to declare war. That's what it says in the Constitution. And that's what this War Powers Resolution is. It's the House of Representatives reclaiming our war powers back from the executive branch. You know, I have to ask you, you know, before he retired, Senator Bob Corker actually sought to limit some of Donald Trump's nuclear authority as president. And he was very vocal. He um, said publicly that Donald Trump hadn't displayed the competence for the job that he had. He described the West Wing as an adult daycare facility, publicly and privately bemoaned. Uh, the departures of uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was very close to H.R. McMaster and Jim Mattis. Um, he seemed like a lone voice. Is there an uptick since um, he left Congress in terms of Republican concern about Donald Trump's fitness as commander in chief? I think with his last strike and going to bring a war with Iran, we're seeing more Republican concern. I previously introduced legislation with Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts to require the president to seek congressional authorization before he could launch a nuclear first strike. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the whole nuclear issue, we have to ask, in terms of Iran, what the actual goal of our government is. If it, in fact, is to get Iran back to the negotiating table on nuclear weapons, we're much further away from that goal because Iran has, in fact, said they're no longer abiding by any nuclear limits on their program. And that's a direct result of Donald Trump's reckless decision making. Did you have the same reaction as some of your colleagues and as Republican Senator Mike Lee did from yesterday's briefings yesterday? Uh, I learned nothing from that briefing that I haven't learned by watching MSNBC. It really <laughs> was a, a briefing. Thank you, and I'm was, sorry. <laughs> was little on substance, and I agree with Senator Lee uh, that the briefers need to do more than say trust us. Uh, let me switch gears to impeachment. Any um, late-breaking news this afternoon, there's a report in Politico that Republicans are saying they expect to have the articles of impeachment perhaps um, by the end of this week or beginning of next. Well, let's take a step back and ask why did the House impeach in the first place? It's because Donald Trump abused his power and solicited a foreign government to help his re-election. That is illegal. No one is above the law. And now we need a fair trial. And Americans understand that a fair trial includes witnesses and documents. That's all we want the Senate to do. And it's our hope that Mitch McConnell will put out rules that allow for witnesses and documents. He's announced that he has the support for the rules, whatever they are, whatever sort of, you know, uh, I think a lot of people are concerned that they won't be produce either of those things, neither witnesses nor documents. What leverage do you have to get those two things? Uh, we have six, at least six Republican senators in very vulnerable states. They have a hard re-election. I like to see them vote for a rule that says we're not going to have any documents or witnesses. That would be a sham trial. It would be a farce. And also would be unfair to the president because the American people understand that was not a real trial. Um, and I'm, would you guess those same six senators are the targets for a potential vote down the road on hearing from a witness like John Bolton? 
I believe John Bowden has made it absolutely imperative that there be witnesses called at the Senate trial. John Bowden has direct firsthand knowledge, and I sure would like to see these six vulnerable Republican senators vote to say they don't want to hear from John Bolton. Um, I want to come back to the news that I heard you make. Um, you're guessing at least two Republicans, one of them um, a close Trump ally, will vote with Democrats today to limit Donald Trump's war powers? Yes, uh, that is what I believe will happen. Congressman Ted Lieu, you never disappoint. Thank you for spending some time with us. We're grateful.